Good morning, good morning. It looks like beautiful weather here, but I'm not sure. The forecast is for more rain today, so I don't know. Anyway, it looks good at the moment. Too good to have the camera the other way. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was searching for an emoji just now. I couldn't find one. All I could find is climbing up. I couldn't find one for coming down, so. No, no more blossoms on that tree. And in fact, I was over at the river yesterday and I went to Wayno Park and uh, the cherries are a real mix. Some are finished, some are just starting. I think it depends really now on the local microclimate. If it's a tree in a sunny, not so windy area, it's been blossoming. But if it's a tree in an area exposed to wind, it's still chilly. So uh, they're all over the map. <laughs> It's too bad we didn't get this sunshine yesterday because uh, we had some nice cherry blossoms. Who knows? Sidewalk is dirty. It's Monday morning. None of us have had a chance to sweep up yet. I haven't done any sweeping. I see garbage on this side and I see garbage on the other side over in front of the bag lady. Your early Monday morning. Come back in a couple of hours and it'll be all cleaned up. I went to Winnow Park because there's a place there where they have a specific, they have some Yamazakura. I don't know. Most of the cherries in Winnow Park are, it's the, what they call the Soume Yoshino type, and they're now coming into bloom now. The Yamazakura, the mountain cherry, the one that we use, blooms later, but they have a group of them, a grove of them over in Winnow Park. So I went yesterday, and they're still shut tight. Nothing shut tight. What happens with them is the leaves start to peek out and then the blossoms come. So the Yamazakura is a little white flower and it's mixed with the little green leaves. It's not decorative. Nobody would think twice about going to see it. And I'm told, I don't know this for a fact, you could maybe Wikipedia it, I'm told that in Edo, before the modern craze for cherry trees, the, the, like Ueno Park, it was mostly Yamazakura, I'm told. The natural trees up in Ueno Park before they, you know, modernized it and put that big walkway. I'm told they were all Yamazakura. I don't know. And I can see why they changed, because the, the Yoshino type are much more decorative, completely much more decorative. And you can see the beer is back. See guys next door, they opened up. When did they open? They've been open for about a week. They opened last Tuesday, I think. The, the quasi-lockdown finished a week ago, Monday, so they opened up after the lockdown. No more payments to the restaurants. The payments finished, so they opened up on Tuesday. Already questions. Can you talk about how difficult it is to carve cherry? I don't know what problem you're having. It's hard wood, so you've got to have a sharp blade and don't try and cut too much at one time. There's no special formula here. Cut a little bit at a time. Don't try and take too much off at any one given moment with whichever tool you're using and keep your tool sharp. Just cut a little bit, little bit, little bit. Take it easy and you're here there. The hardness is irrelevant. The weather in Japan this week is mixed. It's rainy, cloudy, rainy, cloudy, bit of sun, rainy, cloudy, bit of sun. It's getting warmer and actually I could take this off. I've got my Maidosa shirt on. I was sizing last night. Ah. Let's get to work. Okay, what we're going to see today is a bunch of different stuff because as long as I can keep working without talking too much, we're going to persuade and we're going to finish this off in a few minutes. So today's job is doing the first of the color transfer sheets. I've got my brush and pigment ready and we'll take the first proof sheet here this morning, assuming I can get through it, and we'll do a transfer and we'll start the first color block. Maybe we'll use the back of this. No, it's split. We won't use the back of this. I'll have to go upstairs and get a block. Anyway. Let's get to it. So we're going to start the week. <laughs> we're going to start the week with a bang. Be careful. If you've got headphones, we have a compressor, limiter, etc., etc. Let's test this. Let's test this bit by bit. 
I've got the door open, so probably the outside camera is also going to pick this up as well. And there's probably no limiter on that, so I'll put the sound down on the outside camera. And I'll try to remember to get the tripod off the bench. <laughs> okay, noise for a few minutes. I'll be back soon. Tool. I need a deeper chisel for that.
I think that's as close as we can get with our big tools. same conversation same point the three stages to show we did the first stage the first stage was the line work with the knife everywhere second stage was what you just saw the finish off the big chisels taking everything off the third stage now will be getting up to the lines and getting rid of the last scraps of waste looks good looks good Someone says, why do we need a short horizontal kento? The longer they are, the less sure you are of where it is. If you've got a kento that's long, 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 well, I tried this at the beginning. I thought this was cool. Make a big L here and a big long one here. And you put your paper in and you never know where the, the master point is. If that's a tiny bit variable or if the, the edge of your paper is a tiny bit variable, you're lost. So actually, mine are fairly long. This is, what is this? This is uh, like the width of my fat finger here. Most professionals will work with a shorter one. And in fact, the girls upstairs, when they put shims in, they'll put a shim in that's only like three, four millimeters wide. You, need, you just need one point. And the longer these things are, the less amount of precision you have. It's precision, precision, precision. What you really need is a point, absolutely. Mine are a little bit on the long side. It's just, I don't know, the mine are, the, the deciding factor is this. It's the length of the kentonomi. Pacho! That's my deciding factor. But when the girls put shims in, always they are shorter, shorter, shorter. Okay, let's find our working spot and zoom in. If I'm going to work here... Futzing around here, excuse me. We'll try and do this, but I'm almost certainly going to end up wandering off camera. Let me know in capital letters. combination of things the cherry season happening here and school holidays still on and not too bad weather over the weekend it didn't absolutely pour with the rain Asaksa was crazy yesterday crazy I posted that emoji just before the stream started here today the rock climbing emoji I couldn't find one for coming down I could only find the emoji for going up they were doing this yesterday. They were throwing customers off the roof. I could not believe it. This is the first time. He had talked about this, and yesterday they were doing it. They were throwing customers off the roof. The first one was a young girl. I guess she's about a college-age girl or something. I was sitting at my bench upstairs. I'm working on the post office API software yesterday afternoon. I'm sitting there. I went for a walk in the morning, got back for a walk. I was working on the software. And there's this noisy outside. You hear the, they do the breaking of the tiles act events. You hear all the certain sounds. And there was a big ooh, ah, ooh, ah sound. So I came to the window to see what's going on. And I just caught the part where her feet touched the ground. The guy had come down together on two ropes. He got this college-age girl somewhere around there. He, she, he tied the string around her. And they must have come down together side by side. And the crowd went nuts. And I just got to the window in time to see them get to the ground. <laughs> I think they are 
criminally negligent by doing that, but what, what do I know? What do I know? I think they're just insane to try that, but you know, whatever. I just keep out of it. Nothing to do with me. I can't help them. I can't do anything. None of my business. Taking customers up to the roof, tying a rope around their waist and lowering them off when the rope is tied to a little wrought iron balcony. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> This is the last country in the world I would have ever expected that that would be happening. So the police have been here. The police have talked to them. I don't think the police have seen that little particular event, but the police have been here and have chatted with them, I guess, about this and that. I think what the police were mostly interested in is they'd heard reports of swords being thrown around and flashed around. And the police, especially in a Yaks area like this, the police are really sensitive to any discussion about swords. So my guess is, and this is just purely a guess, my guess is that the, the policeman came, found out that the swords were all plastic and stuff, and told the guys, be careful, okay, be careful, okay, and then moved on. And that's my guess, I don't know. pollen thing is here. I guess I'm not quite dead yet. I guess I've still got some semblance of pollen allergy left. You know, It used to be really bad for me when I first came to Japan, but uh, in recent years as I've got older it's decreased an awful lot, but it's not zero yet. So uh, Last year I don't remember having it at all, but this year I've got some and they tell me that it's a real bad year for it, so I guess uh, it's over my threshold, I guess. Someone says Dave is jabbing his chisel right at his finger. I don't know what you're seeing there. I'm not jabbing his chisel right at my finger at all. The, the chisel here is on the ground. Here, just let me, let me get the next one ready. I'm in absolutely zero danger of getting cut here. I'm not quite sure what you're seeing, so hang on a sec. Let's just prep this first for slicing. Get this separated. Okay. Now to separate this, my chisel is running. Let's go in open area here. My chisel is flat on. I'm using this finger to press straight down on it. And my left hand is actually on the wood. There's nothing free here. I'm not my, my hands are not floating free in the air to move back and forth. My left hand is on the wood, my right hand is on the wood, and the chisel is only free. Here, there's the max. That's the max travel for this chisel. My left hand is on the wood, so this chisel cannot fly forward. So I've got this here, my, my right hand finger is pressing down on it, and if you're worried about this finger, it's, it's out of the field of view. This chisel cannot go that far. Thank you. 
<laughs> Karen says, for me, it has gone that far. Then you're not, your, your other hand is not founded on the wood. I don't know. <laughs> the ninjas arrived over there it's still school holidays so uh, so they will be very busy today even though this is midweek it's Monday normally they're dead dead on the water on a Monday but it's school holidays all kids are off school these days now and the, the, over the weekend they were just my god they were just non-stop they've got extra ninjas working there now used to have the same two boys with a girl helping them now it's a whole crowd of them Where do you find extra ninjas? When you've got a busy weekend coming up and you need to hire some extra ninja trainers, where do you find them? Help wanted, Saturdays only. if you're easy to find, so. <laughs> well, actually, though, I guess, actually, it's probably easy for them, because these days, and you can Google this, this is actually true, there are colleges and universities that are giving courses in, in whatever, in ninja something or other. In fact, I think there's a whole special school for it, and somewhere in Mia Prefecture, I don't know the ninja something something university or whatever and I don't know where their graduates get jobs but I guess so there may be a whole group of them lining up waiting to get part-time jobs here I don't know <laughs> Here, it's different here. Now, uh, my left hand now isn't founded on the wood because there is no wood here. So this place, this kind of place is where it's a bit more shaky. My left hand now is, is up in the air. Normally the left hand would be on the wood, but it's up in the air now, so I'm being really careful here. I'm floating my hand, and this is the place where this could slide forward because my left hand is free, so I'm just keeping it very, very careful. A couple of millimeters at a time, no large strokes. We have a jig for this. When the blocks are too small, if you're car trying to carve some little tiny hunkle block or something like that, you don't do it freestyle. There's a little jig, I don't have one here handy to show you, but there's a little jig where you put the thing in and clamp it so the thing on your desk is large, but the little block you're carving is small. I don't, I've never made one for myself because I've never actually done that kind of work, but a professional carver, you know, a, a professional carver for hire does have that sort of thing.
Are we done? Inside, oh god, no, the outside one still. The two outside ones are not done. No, hanko and wood carving, they're two different things. You know, hanko for seals, that was you know, elephant tusks or ivory or stone or stuff like that. That was a different skill set, different tools. People who were carving woodblock prints would not be carving hanko. Not at all. You know, not, not the kind of hanko people would use for their signatures and stuff. You know. Different material, different tools, different skill set. because I'm a geek, you know, but uh, normally a woodblock carver would have no connection with that sort of stuff. But no, we are not. We are still closed. If you're in town and you'd like to drop by, drop us an email. So what's been happening is people have been coming by, but we are not actually open. If you just come by at a random time, it's quite possible nobody will be here. The place is going to be closed up. So if you would like to come by, absolutely drop us an email. And we can arrange that you can drop by in a time when, when one of us will be here. Uh, actually, I got an email on this last night, a young lady who's coming for the Me Lab, which I guess is open again. I hadn't known this. She says she's coming in April, and I guess she's got permission to come in. I guess there must be a student visa thing here rather than tourist visa. She's coming in for the next Me Lab, and I didn't even know that was up and running again. Over at uh, Kawaguchiko. I really didn't have any idea that was back to back back to back in action. Our traditional hanko carving. You mean you mean hanko legs for seals? No, they're cut. They're carved. You can you see lots of videos. They're they're more engraved. They're more like Western engraving or something. They're very hard. There's little I don't know, engraving tools that, that chop out the stuff. It's not a knife like we have. And they would have been ivory or, or uh, bone or elephant tusks or whatever. It's still a big deal here, you know. It's kind of a dirty thing, you know. You can go to a hanko company, there's one around the corner from here, and you can still get a hanko made on ivory here. They maybe don't put them in the front window, but they still got them. And those guys are saying, it's our tradition, it's our tradition, we can't, you know, do this, blah, blah, it's our tradition. Crap. So yeah, this is one of those places where you can uh, get that stuff.
So we keep asking, I cut my fingers. How often do I slice my fingers open? Never. I don't cut my fingers. Rare. The only time I cut my fingers is when I'm waving to the chat and I got a knife in my hand and I slice my finger when I'm waving it around. There's no, there's no risk here, you know. There's absolutely no risk. Where I cut myself is that. I've just just come here. Boom, 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 boom. We finished cutting, and I'm going to move the block or something, and I'm going to wipe away just you know bits of wood or something. And maybe if I haven't moved my chisel far enough away, and I'm wiping like this, so it's cut, move, wipe, cut, move, wipe. And sometimes that'll happen. If I haven't moved far enough away and I'm wiping, I might bang the edge of the chisel with my with my finger or something. So during the wiping or something, that's more often when there's more of a risk of cutting myself. During the actual wood cutting part, there's really basically no risk at all. It is curious though why people ask that so much. Very interesting. I mean, basically every day on this chat, sometimes somebody asks about this. You know. Very curious. Does it look that risky? I don't know. I didn't think so, but I guess it does. Okay, we're almost done here. A couple minutes here, then we'll get to the test printing. Oops, wrong way around. Again, here now, my left hand is unsupported. It's up in the air, so that's more trouble, more risk there. think we are done, are we not? Another registration corner, just the last little clean up here. I think we're done. Any place missed? I don't think so. Wash it off.
Someone's asking, is there a sh shrine about the wood? I don't believe so, not that I've ever heard. I don't have any idea. And over at Kiba, Shin Kiba, the wood yards and the lumber yards, I'm sure they have shrines and traditions and festivals and things like that. But specifically for cherry or mountain cherry, I've never heard of such a thing. And the wood carving community, the, the UQA carving community, I've never heard of something at that end either. So no, I don't know. My first guess on something like that would be that the wood thing is more utilitarian. The paper is somehow magical and mystical and they do the spiritual stuff on the paper. Wood, it's just like whatever piece of wood, it's more utilitarian, I don't know. <laughs> my hand out of the way, right? I'm not going to put my hand here and slice this one. Nobody would do that. Yeah, the, uh, the wood thing, I'm sure there are shrines and, and like I said, over in the wood yard in Chin Kiba, in the place where all the wood merchants are, I'm sure they've got a local shrine, they have festivals, they pray to the gods of the forest and whatever, absolutely, I'm sure they would do that. I've never heard of anything like that being related to the carving community with Yamazakura <coughs> cherry wood and stuff like that in, in specific, but I'm sure, absolutely, there will be something like that. You're getting a test print, we're moving on. We're moving on, it's not a test print. What we're gonna do here now, this is this will give a little bit of explanation. Hang on a sec, let me get a piece of paper. This print has lots and lots and lots of design elements that are not in the key. For example, we can see a monkey he's going to be reaching into the water. In the water, there are going to be ripples. Those ripples will affect more than one color block. Listen carefully, class. This is going to get complicated here. Those ripples and other elements will affect more than one color block. So for this print, I can't use the completely classical ukiyo-e technique. The ukiyo-e technique would be, would be to print the key block one, two, three, four, five, six times. And on those printings, color in the areas I want to keep, paste them down under fresh wood and go. But, for example, we have ripples here. How am I gonna do that on multiple blocks? There's a ripple in on one block and a ripple out on the other block. How can we do that? So what we're gonna do here is stage by stage. I can't transfer this key to six sheets of paper and carve six blocks. I'm gonna transfer it to one block. And on that block, I'm gonna carve some shapes. There's going to be stars. And the first block, no, the first block won't have ripples. The first block will have, for example, stars. Now the second block also needs the stars, but they're not visible on the key. So we're gonna do just one color block and we're gonna use a combination of my carved lines and Photoshop data from John. The Photoshop data has the part of the ripple area and it has stars. Let's just do it. We'll explain it as we're doing it. 
So I'm going to cut here now just one transfer sheet and we're going to do it. Let me just, let me just do it. Let me just do it. Make it explain. So if someone says I'm lost, whatever, just, just watch. Just watch. Just watch. I have Photoshop data from John, but if I just pasted this on a piece of wood, we would never know how to get the registration. So here's what we're going to do. Actually, I'll need two pieces. I need a junk piece first. Are you ready? Are you going to catch this? The famous moment when the block gets splashed with pigment. Goodbye, clean wood. fix my barn yet. Oh. Time, 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 time. How embarrassing is this? Actually, two. We also don't need the slippery. One, we need the non-slip. Test sheet. Here's our first test sheet. There's lots of stuff. We don't have a clue what it is yet. All will come later on. Obviously, you know what the concept is. Ship it. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <coughs> Not yet. Not yet. This is going to be key block plus six colors. We are cranking up the Patreon Chibi level. We've kept the same level of design for Patreon Chibis now for five years. And I told John it's time to do something different. So we've got, instead of key block and four colors, we're using key and six colors this time. There's going to be one, two, three gradations, maybe four gradations. We're leveling up. Part of this is because the Patreon's doing really well. There's Money is just coming in that helps so much, and we have got to start to grade up how we, we repay the Patreon people. It's going to be lots and lots of work. We need to do it. Okay, Dave, quit talking. Do this. That was a quick test print. Now, let's do it again. This next one is going to be a transfer sheet. But no gum. Speaking of ripples, there you go. Coming, coming later, Nate. Not today. Coming later. Ripples and stars and a moon. Today, for the background tone, we need the moon and stars and the base tone for the ripples. And what we're going to do is this. This, these lines are not accurate. This is Photoshop, but this is not what I carved. These lines are the real, real lines. So we're going to take the Photoshop data
you see where we're going with this now? That gives me the stars. And we forget the Photoshop quasi Kento markings. We go with the real Kento markings, which are the edge of this paper. But what about the monkey? To carve this one, I need to have that lines. So we are going to bring the block back. And I'm going to print again now. Now we have the combination of Photoshop data, which I need, <coughs> and the real lines of the block. This is going to get pasted down, and this is going to do it. But I don't have a piece of wood. I forgot this morning. So, time out for a minute here. Let's protect this from drying out. I get to run upstairs. Third floor. I've got to run upstairs, third floor, and get myself a piece of wood. Back in one minute or two minutes. Back in a sec. Seems to be matching up, you know, there's going to be a skin tone, there's a moon, stars, two faces, an ear, a moon reflection. Looks good. Looks good.
What happens next, you know, of course. Cut some registration marks, and away we go. How's our time? 8.52, we're looking good. We'll get a peel, I think, here, yes. I'm not sure what gumpy this is. I've been a bit careless about choosing my gumpy here later. There's an old, we've got gumpy in the shop now. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> These days we're selling gumpy and it's caused a problem actually. Before we just had our own gumpy stock for ourselves and didn't worry about you know anything else. But now we keep selling it. Orders come in and we find we're out of it and we grab some more and so now the gumpy stock is something that I can't actually touch. It belongs to the shop, it doesn't belong to the carvers anymore. So we have, a, I've just been getting scraps here and there for left over. So I think I've got to start either officially stealing it from the shop stock or arranging to buy it or something. I don't know. This is a gumpy remnant. I think it's five, we'll see. I think we'll get a good peel. They tell me yesterday, they tell me tomorrow I'm out on the way to Ome. Ome tomorrow for some powwow with some staff members and maybe. So if the stars all line up tonight, we can say goodbye to some hair. Someone wearing out the bamboo sheath. It can wear out in a day or less than a day. If you're printing on a, a heavy background, you can change it at noon. Print all morning, change it at lunchtime, and print again in the afternoon. The bamboo can wear out in a day easily. Or it can last for months if you're just doing delicate work with it with a delicate baron. It's disposal, that disposable, that cover is completely disposable. Too much glue, I have to wipe some off here. Maybe okay. Or maybe okay. I thought it was too much. Seems okay. Let's give it a go. This is the way it should be. I usually spray too much. Psst. It doesn't come off easily. You gotta spray just enough to hold it through the copy machine. This is good. Sometimes I've been screwing that up. When I try and peel the back sheet off, it pulls half of the gumpy with it. We're looking good. Maybe we have just about the right amount of glue, just the right amount of spray. Maybe this is going to be a nice one here. Yeah. 
Should we try a corner peel? Live dangerously? Let's try this instead of going all the way to the front. No, it didn't look. Look, it wouldn't go all the way. Oh, close, close, close. This is an 11 out of 10. Whoa! If that isn't an 11, I don't know what is. We got it. We got it. Six. I'm never speaking to you again. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It was a five. And we have... We have monkeys. This is the back side of the paper. The front side is still there. The pigment went deep into the paper to the back side, and we actually have a ghost print here. Somebody wants it. Send it to me. Hi. Shoo. <laughs> <clears throat> now I've got to be careful with a couple of places because John has fooled around with the image here again. We have burst the frame in one place, burst right out of both lines in one place. And in the second place we have burst one of the lines but not the other. And I'm still not sure actually what's happening in this part. That's why I left it on the key block. I'm not sure that might need to be cut out or not. I don't fully understand what's happening there. Looking good. Looking good. Points deducted for not going all the way on the corner peel and the slight tear in the other corner. Picky, picky, picky. Picky, picky, picky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what time is it? 8.59. Let's do some more carving. It's still a bit wet. To, to and I'll move ahead a little bit more on the process here. We've done, this will be one color block. <clears throat> when I have finished carving this, we will need information from it. The information about the lines, the monkey shape and stuff, the next one will work in exactly the same way. When we're pasting this next one down, we will follow the same basic procedure. We will print first on a non-gumpy paper, and then I will print on the non gumpy paper twice. I will print the key blocks. Then I will print this block that we're just carving in light pigment. And that will give me the location of the stars on our proof print. I will then take the Photoshop printout, take it again, move it around on top until the stars line up and then put it down. You'll be seeing this on a stream next week and then paste it down. So it's key to number one. Key and one combined to give me the information for number two. And then we'll go all the way. It'll be key one and two, we'll do for three. And then it'll be key one and two for four, key one and two for five and six. But for the rest of the color blocks, we will need the key block, the stars, and the ripples. And they will all have to show on every one of the subsequent transfer sheets. This one is a bit complicated and I'll, there's no way around it. If you want color blocks that blend without outlines, 
then you have to register one color block to another color block instead of reg registering it to an outline block. It's actually straightforward. It's all the same concept at heart. Karen must be doing this all the time in her work because she has lots of elements in her work that don't show on the key block. To show Karen son. Clear as mud. Whatever, just watch it as it goes forward over the next couple of weeks. Buddha body, that's another way Karen has mentioned. I'm not sure how much you're trying to explain here without getting too complex all at once. Those ripples, I, Karen's calling muda body waste carving, throwaway carving. Imagine then if I had carved these ripple shapes onto the key block. This would have been a good way to do this. We could have carved ripples on the key block, even though we don't want ripples in the finished print, but carve them on the key block. Then transfer, transfer, transfer. Your information then transfers to all the different color blocks. The color blocks register properly with the ripples, and then you come back to your key blocks and you rip off the color, the, the ripples. You tear off the ripples because they're no longer needed anymore. So this is an alternative method that Karen is mentioning here.
Okay. The block here, the one you're seeing, is going to be actually probably not visible through most of the print. It's for a light blue. It'll be a sky blue, what they call here in Japanese, mizu-iro. It'll be a sky blue color, but it will be invisible in most of the print. It's only going to show in areas where it's cut out of the next one. The next color will also be an overtone, which goes over the whole print. So this one is going to get covered by this one, except in these areas. So if you imagine a base tone of light blue going below everything, below the monkeys, below everything, but this next color that comes on top of it, which will also go over monkeys and river and sky and everything, but it will not have these ripple marks. So these ripple marks will show light blue, the color of this one. And the moon color and the reflection will, of course, show paper color. So the print we're carving here, the color block we're carving here, is almost never going to show, except as a base tone. There's the Oshibori truck. Today's Monday and we'll be continuing this work on the next stream on Thursday and I'm not sure how far I'm going to get with it. It may be that over the next few days I don't actually touch this at all. It could be when we meet again on Thursday morning, three days from now, I'll be carving this same block. Today I'm shipping. There was a ton of orders over the weekend. I'm a shipper today. Tomorrow I'm out in Ome and maybe for two days I'll be out in Ome. I'm not sure. 
the staff there has asked for a powwow. <laughs> so I'm not quite actually sure what's going on. I have my suspicions, but uh, I'm not actually sure what's happening. So we'll see come Thursday. I'm not sure what I'll be doing. It could be this blog, it could be something else. If I have had a chance to move forward on this block, then no problem. We will see the next color block come into play. There will be something. I guess we're coming up to show and tell, are we? A couple of minutes here. Let me just cut this head. That'll do it, I think. Hey. Okay, for show and tell, it's just going to be a continuation of what we looked at the other day. <coughs> I don't want a risque weather dress. What's this? A YouTube address, FKO. I didn't make that up. That's my video, isn't it? Interesting. I forgot to turn my light on. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Look at that. I forgot to turn the light on. Did I roll back the scroll? Of course I rolled back the scroll. And it, I, I rolled really, really carefully, actually. And it's now not half the diameter. It's much less diameter than it was before. I rolled it back really carefully. No idea when it will next be looked at. Haven't. OK, I said I was going to peek ahead in this book, and I didn't do that. I didn't have time, I'm sorry. So I have really no idea what's coming up. I know in general terms what's in this book, but I don't remember specifics. A little bit of a treasure chest. Let's just see what we can find. Yeah, the camera. Nay. Actually, there is. There's a camber on the street, so the truck is actually tipped a little bit. We looked at this stuff the other day. What's the next page? Okay, we looked at... What did we look at? We didn't get to this, did we? We just looked at one page. Let's see what's in the next page. The challenge now for Dave to remember what these are, because I haven't looked in this folder for years. Years I haven't looked in here. So this is going to be a challenge. Okay, we have a woodblock print, but this is, again, this is a wood engraving. Let me get my, or it could be a mesotint or something like this. Let's have a look. I think this is an etching. It's not actually a woodblock print. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Again, it will be an exchange. Somebody has, uh, has enjoyed the videos or something, so they send me a print as a thank you. 
This is a very European style, nothing Japanese about this at all. And who's it by? Canada. I have no idea what that says. Canada, Canadi. I'm sorry, I don't know who designed this. There's a stamp. Oh, it's Colleen, Colleen Corradi, C-O-R-R-A-D-I, in Italy. She was an early member of one of the Baron groups, uh, of one of the Baron group exchanges, and she must have sent this over as a thank you to something. It's interesting, it's not really related to Japanese printmaking, so let's just slide it away here. I, haven't, I don't know anything about it and don't have anything to offer about it. So. These, oh, these, I remember these. There's a story here. My God, this could have killed me. These prints nearly killed me and both of my daughters. I remember these. Oh, I remember this. This is the years of the poet series. I'm making the poets. We have exhibitions. Now and then at the exhibitions, a crowd of people will come in. They are from a, a Sunday morning woodblock group or something like that at the local community center somewhere in Tokyo. I mean, my exhibitions were in Shinjuku and people would come in from all over the place. And I remember one morning, one day, a group of older guys came in. These are retired people, and they are making woodbuck prints as a hobby, as a hobby. And one of the guys, I remember his name, Miyata-san. He came in and he brought me, it must be this one, it's not that one. He must have brought me perhaps these two. And he had carved some wood blocks himself, based on, well, the designs you see here. It's a Hiroshige print. Oh, I would have done that one. He brought me some, some prints he'd done. And he says, teach me, sensei, teach me, teach me, teach me. And I'm like, well, no, I don't teach wood about printmaking. I'm sorry, I've, I've got a full life making my own series here with my daughters and blah, 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 blah. And he says, well, can I come and watch what's going on? And he had, you know, he had carved this thing and he tried to print it without really understanding much of what's going on. And it was kind of blotchy and kind of messy, but whatever, the guy is trying to do this. So I must have said, sure, come on over. No problem, no problem, no problem. So he came over and he brought some, some of the blocks and this one he brought with him. And I actually printed this. I would have printed this from his blocks, given him a copy and kept a copy for myself. And it was really difficult because he hadn't carved very deeply at all. There was mess all over the place. So I think I took my chisel there and banged out some stuff and carved them a bit more deeply. Okay, long story short, it's okay. We go on with this. And then at the end of this, my daughters are there. Daddy, let's go. Come on, where's this guy going to hang around? And the guy says, okay, thanks, Dave, really so much. Tell you what, let's go for a drive. I'll take you guys out for a drive. Let's go up to the... And I remember, he wanted to show us the old silver mine up in Okotama. I was living in Hamura. And up in Okotama, there was an old silver mine. And this is actually, there's a terrible, terrible background to this. I don't know how much of this is on Wikipedia. One of the silver mines in Japan in the old Edo time was up there in Okotama. And it was slave labor. The miners were underground in a silver mine, eight X hours a day, dirt, whatever. And there was a little village up above it. And the village had like accommodation for the miners. And across the other side of the stream, it had a bunch of ladies who were forced to this village to live there as, um, as a help, you know, to help the miners do their work or whatever. I don't know what to say. It was a terrible, terrible situation. And this was in the Edo time forced labor in the mines and forced labor for the women to comfort the miners, whatever expression you want to use. There's nothing good about this story at all. But it's still there. I mean, the, it's not still there. I mean, the, where it used to be is there. And there's some old broken shacks still there and stuff like that. And I had always wanted to see this. He says, let's go for a drive. Let's go for a drive. So me and the kids get in the car with this guy in Hamra and zoom, we go up there. And he nearly killed us. We're, we get to Ome, we get to this mountain road, it's curving round and round, and he's enthusiastic, he's talking, he's looking in the back seat to talk to the girls, and we go round this curve, and he drifts totally, completely into the opposite lane. And we're on a blind mountain road, and I'm like in the front seat, clutching this, Miyata-san, Miyata-san, he looks back, there's a car coming, and they do the wrong thing. We stay on the wrong side. The other guy was a smart driver. He went to the wrong side of the road and we crossed the wrong way around. 
and he disappears in the rearview mirror, and I'm like, what has just happened? And I just blew up at this guy. What the, what, just look, stop the car, let me out, we'll walk back home, we'll hitchhike home, I don't care, just let us out of this car. And he's like, it, we're all gonna die, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter. I forget the words he used, but he's just blowing me off. We're all gonna die anyway, who gives a shit? Let's just go, let's go. And I just, whatever, me and my two kids are in the car, and whatever, whatever, whatever. We did, he, he settled down, he drove properly in the right lines and settled down. But my God, what an experience. My kids were just like, they really didn't actually see what happened, and I don't think I even really told them about it. But that's this is me at the sun. These prints are in my folder. And I guess every time I see this, I remember what happened, and I'm just like, ah, ah. Yeah, we got there to the mine, and actually, there's there's really absolutely nothing there. There's there, there's a, there's a wide space on the road. It widens out on the road. There's a place to park your car, and there's a signboard that says this is where it all happened. And if you peer through the brush, whatever, there's a bit of broken wood or something there. So there's actually nothing to see. It wasn't any point in going up there. So whatever. It makes a great story, but it's a story I really would not rather uh, rather tell. But I remember his name. I will never forget that man. Never forget him. Look at what we have here. Look, 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 look. Speak of the devil. This is John Amos's newest design. This is a design from John Amos way, 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 way back. Is there a date on here? It says 02. It must be 2002. And this could have been made by John for one of the Baron Group exchanges, or maybe he just made it for fun. He has always had a thing for tanuki. He's always had a thing for tanuki. And uh, I don't know if he still has any interest in this. Maybe it's on his website, maybe not. I don't have any idea. John would probably look at this now and think, oh my God, please don't show it. This is an early experiment or something like this. I've got no idea. There's no reason to be ashamed of it at all. He was uh, deeply interested at that time in learning how to do this, and he's still at it decades later. And in fact, this is going to be a big year for John. He's retired now, or retiring. Is this his last year? So when do they finish in universities over there? June, July? So maybe come this June, John is going to crack off the handcuffs and you watch the guy fly. It's going to be something else. Have we got a link to it? Yeah, he calls himself tanukiprince.com. I don't know the paper. It's a Western paper. And maybe back when John was doing this, he didn't have access to Japanese paper. I don't know. It's the same kind of paper that Matt Brown uses, I think. Yeah, and this is a thing. This is a thing with John, well, Hokusai as well, but it's a thing, popping the frame. And absolutely, we see this with John there, and we see it here. So he's got his uh, he's got his quirks, the same as all of us do. And popping out of the frame is one of them. And is this guy stoned or drunk or I don't know? <laughs> And John must have sent it to me at the time with a sort of a thank you letter. Thanks, Dave, for all your, your work or whatever is going on. No idea. No idea. Okay, for the last one, this one, there's a long, long, long story about this one, too. Here we go. This is Gary Ludke. There's, there's no uh, secret here. This is April 2001, so we're looking at 21 years ago this week. It's a design called Banzai. Gary Ludke, we've also got a website for him. Somebody got a website? I think it's called, all one word, princeofhawaii.com, I think is Gary's website. This is a woodblock print. Gary works, works, worked, I don't know the tense, I don't know anything, he's still doing this or whatever. He, at the time, he was working in Photoshop. He was making designs of Hawaii in, in Photoshop and publishing them as Jiklai prints. And he wanted, I don't know the dot com, Terry, I don't think so. I think that's the different guy, John. I think Gary's website is all one word, princeofhawaii.com, I think. I think you've got something different there. 
Anyway, Gary was making prints with Gicle. He didn't either want to learn himself to do. So for his first couple of prints, he hired the guy in America who is, uh, is it Gary's website? What's the Terry Arisman? Okay, no idea. I'll keep out of it. I don't know. No. It redirects. Okay, okay, okay. I'll keep quiet. I know the, the guy in America who's teaching at uh, a university over there. I know, you know, the guy who does the rubbing on his face with the baron. I forget the printer's name. No, it's gone. He was teaching at the University of Madison or something like this. I can't remember. Anyway, he did a couple of prints for Gary in woodblock. And Gary wanted to get some more done, so he calls me, what can you do? And I, um, I used one of his images in my own series, my own Sudimono albums, but he wanted to publish more, but I wasn't set up for publishing. So I introduced him to a young carver called, a young printer called Weda. I guess I carved, no, Seki-san, that's right. Look at this, look at this, and here's the story. Dave, get your story right. The carving is, it's two people, it's Bo and Seki, and I really don't remember what's happened here, and the printing is Ueda, and he's the young man who now is acting as a print dealer. So I guess I carved part of this. I don't remember doing that. I guess I did. Maybe I carved the key block, and Seki-san carved the color blocks, and we sent it out to Ueda-san for printing. I don't know. I really don't know. Does he still have some copies of it left? I don't know. We must have made a couple of dozen copies and sent it over to Gary. And I, that's actually all I remember about this. I really, really, really don't remember. And I have two other jobs. I used one of Gary's designs in my Sudimono albums, and then I published one of his. If you go to mokohankan.com and look for print number six, that's another design of Gary's. Can I remember the message? The HTTPS dot com catalog 0006.php. I think, does that work? I think that should work. That's another design of Gary's that he designed and that I carved and we sent for printing by Numabisan and we published it. And there's no more copies left. We would love to keep going, but it's insanely difficult to print. And these days, Gary, I have no idea if he's still active doing designs or not. I have no idea. But Wade-san did a nice job. Wade-san's not working as a printer anymore at all. He's now a dealer, a book dealer. We get books and prints from him. This is intentional. This is not a defect. It's the intentional Baransuji. That's Gary's stylized sing signature. It's a G. GL, Gary Lutke. <laughs> I had forgotten about this, you know. I guess I did some of the carving. I really don't remember. <laughs> Maybe Sexan didn't want to carve the fine lines, so perhaps I did the key block and Sexan did the color blocks. Maybe something like that. I don't remember. It's Way the Shingle, the printer. Way the Shingle. Can I recognize my work? No, not at all. I don't remember this at all, and nothing I see tells me it's David. There's nothing. Nothing I see here at all. It's got my name on it, that's all. It says carving bull and seki, and I really don't remember what we did. My God, I don't remember what we did. I don't have a date, I don't have a clue. Well, the date was 2001, so it's 22 years ago, so. Anyway, there we go. Hi, okay, okay, okay. Okay, another couple of pages of this book. I really, we're gonna. My God, oh, there's fun stuff coming up. There is fun stuff coming up, but let's stay with this book for, for a while, for a couple of weeks. There's lots and lots and lots of fun stuff coming up. Okay, I'm out of here. It's Monday, I have a ton of things to do today. I think when I see you again on Thursday, I hope I will be 25 pounds lighter. I don't know if she's back in business or not, I don't know. <laughs> 
the Ninja Boys are up and ready. It's going to be really busy for them today. It's spring vacation. They probably already have the first class in there already. Did you see people come in at 9 o'clock? Maybe. Okay. All right. I am out of here. Thanks very much for your for, for cooperation today. Thanks to the mods again for helping out with this. I hear they had a bad time the other day, but uh, today uh, maybe it's been quiet. No idea. Thanks very much. I'm going to see you on Thursday. Bye for now. Bye-bye. What's happening outside? Action. That's the lady from the coffee shop, and that was Yamaguchi-san, the owner of the little theater. Maybe that was his morning coffee. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he forgot something in the coffee shop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am out of here. See you later. Bye for now.